Welcome back to Ag Enterprise Management. If you have not done so already, please review the first introductory module. My name is Matthew Johnson, and I'll be your lecturer for the course. For more information, check out the course site and the syllabus for this course as well. So during this module, we'll be talking about the business model canvas. We're also going to go over a few examples of some local farms and how they use the business model canvas to lay out the different ideas and aspects of their business and then you're going to be required to uh, create a business model canvas for the ag business that you looked at during the second module. So a business model canvas is what I call kind of a precursor to the business plan so we'll be getting into more detail with that. Okay, so shown here is the business model canvas. And what's nice about this is that it is just a one piece of paper. Um, whereas if we have a typical business plan, this is going to be anywhere from 10 to all the way up to 50, if not more pages. So what I like about this is that you can quickly get a picture and a view of what the business is all about. Um, so it may seem easy at first, like, oh, all I have to do is fill out one piece of paper for the business. But the challenge with this is that it requires you to be succinct uh, and exact with your words. So as you can see, there's not a lot of room to put in a lot of fluff. So the words you use have to be very impactful and to the point. And like I said, the nice thing about this document and why I'm a big proponent of business on Canvas is that it just forces you to quickly get to the main uh, points of the business. Um, so anyone who is familiar with the business model canvas or if even is not familiar with it, if there's someone there to explain it to them, uh, after a very quick uh, one to three minute presentation, they can understand what the business is all about. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, go through the business model canvas and kind of break down all these different segments. So the first thing we want to do is look at the far right side of the canvas. We start with the customer segments. So this is really important to identify who are our customers. In other words, who are we getting money from, getting revenue from, who are paying us for product services. Obviously a very, very important thing for a business. Even if we're set up as a nonprofit, and we still need to be having revenue coming in to support our um, enterprise. Okay, so uh, a lot of why we do this is with customer demographics. So really try and identify as much as possible, um, uh, as much information as you can about your customer. So this could be the age, gender, location, income, education, and ethnicity. Um, so for example, if we're gonna be selling at a farmer's market, say at Copyline Community College versus a farmer's market in uh, Pearl City, these may have very different type of customers, maybe different people who are coming to these farmer's markets. So it's understanding who, are, who is going to those farmer's markets, whereas KCC market may have more tourists, maybe more Japanese tourists going there. So it may be a specific market that we want to be targeting after. Whereas a market in Pearl City, I may have more local residents coming to that farmer's market. So there may be different kinds of products and different ways that we want to market our products uh, towards those members. So this is really all about identifying who who is your customer, where are they coming from, where are they, and what are they looking for. We then move on to the middle block this, this is the impact and value proposition. So this is really all about the why. Why are you offering this product or service to the customer segments that you already identified? What makes your product or service special? Why do your customers want to come and do business with you as opposed to uh, any potential competition or any other product or service that may be out there? This is almost kind of like the mission statement of your organization. So this is where you're, you're not explaining what you do, but getting into more of the details 
that have that higher level of the purpose of why you're in business and what you're looking to accomplish. Next, in between the customer segments and the value proposition, you have your customer relationships and customer channels. So a lot of times these two can kind of be mixed together. The best way that I distinguish between the two is customer relationships, which is the top box there, is where do you engage with your customers? So this is where, where do you actually have that, that interaction, that transaction happening? So for example, if you are a farmer selling kale at a farmer's market, that interaction at that farmer's market is going to be that customer relationship. So if the market is every Friday, that relationship, that expectation um, with you and your customers that you're going to be there at that Friday market with kale. And that's also where you, you develop and identify your brand and, and your identity and, and a lot of those kind of pieces that go into um, people knowing who you are and what you're all about. And then with the customer channels, this is where you acquire new customers and also this is how you deliver your value to your customers and then also how you communicate to your customers. So this could be a variety of different things from having a website, um, being able to receive and respond to emails, phone calls, social media. Um, this is a lot of the communication that happens between you and your customer and and really getting the word out so this is a lot of where like your traditional marketing happens so this is how people get to know who you are what you're all about and how they can become a customer and then once they become a customer is how do you keep them as a customer okay this is the communication customer feedback um, a variety of different things that can go into this box All right, next, moving over to the left side of the canvas, we have our key partners, activities, and key resources. So this starts to describe the, the what of, you know, the what are you doing? It's kind of like the backbone of what makes you delivering the value proposition possible, okay? So the key activities is, is really the, the specific things, the, the things that you're doing in the business. So if you're a kale farmer, Growing kale on 10 acres of land um, is a key activity. Uh, going to the farmer's market once a week is a key activity. You know, those kind of things. So really kind of just the, the what of, of, of the business. Uh, going below there, you have the key resources. So I usually like to use this box to describe uh, any tangible assets that I currently have. Or if I don't have them yet, I'll still list them under key resources, but put like a star or asterisk under there. Um, and these are things like if you have property or if you have a lease, uh, if you have any vehicles, equipment. Um, yeah, any of the key type uh, tangible uh, assets that you need for your business. This is where you go ahead and list that. And then for key partners. So these are the individuals or organizations that support your business. All right, so this may be uh, another business that you have some kind of complimentary support with. Um, this could be some key suppliers that you work with. These may be trade organizations like uh, Hawaii Farm Bureau or Hawaii Farmers Union. Um, so any kind of organization that you work with that isn't directly in the business but is helping you to accomplish your goals. At the bottom of the business model canvas, you have the cost structure and revenue. This section highlights your business model is how you make money and the costs associated with those revenues. For a farm, you have a wide variety of revenue streams that can include selling kale direct at a farmer's market, selling wholesale to restaurants, or having farm tours uh, available to the public or even leave, leasing land um, to your nearby neighbors. Cost structure describes expenses you have to operate the business, 
So this could include the cost of goods sold, land expenses, labor, utilities such as electric, uh, and marketing. Also include insurance, whole variety of costs. So this is a good way to describe just the money that's going to be coming in and the money that's going to be going out. All right, let's look at an example of a local farm business model canvas. Cuckoo Farms located up on the North Shore. If you haven't been up there before, they have a great roadside cafe that I recommend checking out. Um, so yeah, so we're going to start here on the right-hand side looking at their customer segments. So Cuckoo Farms, uh, they have a roadside cafe where they're selling fresh farm produce. Um, and they're also making value-add products such as a little koi jam and butter. And they also have ready-to-eat foods at the cafe as well. So they have uh, a few different customer segments here that we're going to go over. So you have your farmer's market customers. Right? So specifically they're going to the KCC farmer's market and they've even broken it down in a little more detail. Loyal locals, visitors from both mainland and Japanese. So because they've added a little more information here, they know, you know, they have an idea of who are the customers and what they're going to look like at that farmer's market. So because they know that there's going to be Japanese customers there, they're going in and they're adding in Japanese, both English and Japanese signage. So that's been able to help them to relate to those customers that are coming to that market. Now for the Roadside Cafe up in Kahuku, uh, they've identified that they have North Shore locals that are coming to the cafe. Uh, specifically, they have after church families coming on Sundays. And they also have a variety of different kinds of tourists. So they have tourists in general, but then they also specifically see they have a good amount of Turtle Bay resort guests coming to the farm. So with that kind of information, they could approach Turtle Bay and say, you know, come up with some kind of promotion to try and attract even more tourists to come to the Roadside Cafe. Uh, they also have school groups. So these are schools coming up with a group of kids. The kids are given a tour around the farm. They even have a tractor ride they take them on. It's really a lot of fun. And um, so this is a great... Um, community service that they're providing to the school groups but they're also able to make a little bit of money off of these groups coming up to um, the farm value add wholesale buyers so as I mentioned they uh, Google Farms is also taking some of that farm fresh produce and they're making different products with it so they have a, a line of Lilikoi products there's jam jellies there's a syrup and they're bottling that and then they're selling that to wholesale buyers. So wholesale buyers is, is any kind of customer that is buying your product and then reselling it to, um, to, to their own customers. So this could be a variety of stores throughout Oahu. I think they also have some uh, wholesale accounts uh, in Japan as well. And then they also have website customers. So you can go to the Kuhuku Farms website and order some of their value add products directly on the website and then have them shipped directly to you uh, wherever you may be. Okay, so moving back over to the impact and value proposition. So what is this value proposition, the, the impact that Kuku Farms is providing to their customer segments? Okay, so this, so we're gonna read right here, it says providing farm fresh, ready to eat food and take home items while providing a unique farm experience on the North Shore of Oahu, okay? So this, this kind of has that, that mission statement kind of vibe, and this is coming directly from Kylie, uh, who is the owner-operator of the farm. And uh, I like it. It has some very key language in there, farm fresh, ready to eat food. Uh, and then I like that also unique farm experience. And then also even gets more descriptive where it says on the North Shore of Oahu. So there's a lot of... Um, descriptive words in there that, that really kind of gives you a better vibe of what Cuckoo Farms is all about. All right, now moving back uh, over to the customer relationships. All right, so uh, every Saturday booth at the KCC Farmer's Market, okay, so this is where they're engaging with those uh, Farmer's Market customers. Um, their roadside cafe is open Wednesday through Sundays, okay, so all their North Shore local and after church family and tourist customers know that when they go to the cafe Wednesday through Sunday that they'll be open and ready for business. Um, website that allows for online purchasing. Okay, so that's another platform where they can engage with the customers and, and, and sell some of their products. And then 
Also, they're shipping and delivering the products within one week. Okay, so that's part of the expectation um, with uh, both their value add and also their website customers. And then moving down below there, we have some of the channels that they use. All right, so uh, this is channels for communicating to their customers. So they have the KCC Farmers Market booth. This is where they know they can kind of put up their signage. You can see the logo. This is where they're displaying to everyone at the KCC Market what Kahuku Farms is all about. Um, they also have the North Shore Roadside Cafe. Same thing, a lot of signage, a lot of their logo, a lot of pictures, a lot of colors. Uh, very um, nice, visually appealing um, structure to see. They also have their website, once again, having that same uh, colors, uh, very similar to the rest of the picture that Kuku Farms is showing. They also have social media, so they're on Yelp. Uh, they're also on Facebook, Instagram, and they're also using something they told me about, SeekSpot. I'm not really too familiar with that, but that's a, a social media platform that they're using. As I mentioned before, too, they're also using signage, both in English and Japanese. So I believe this is at their KCC Farmers Market, but also on their website as well. And then they're also using email and phone. Okay, so moving over to our left, we have our key activities. All right, so we're they're operating a cafe with three to four staff Wednesday through Sunday. They're selling produce and value add items at the farmers market every Saturday morning. They're processing and selling value add products. So this is that little clean line of products that I mentioned before, and they're also doing farm tours. Now, one thing that's interesting with Kuhuku Farms is that they have a sister company, uh, Matsuda Fukuyama Farms, that is actually doing the growing of a lot of these products. So that's why you're not seeing that here in the key activities. So that's what's nice about the business model canvas that it is explaining to us just how this business is working. All right, going down below there, we have their key resources. All right, roadside cafe, commercial kitchen, they have a demonstration farm, farmer's market booth, and a website. And then on the left side, we have the key partners. As I mentioned before, one of the key partners is Matsuda Fukuyama Farms. All right, so that is the sister company of Kuku Farms, and they're doing all the growing of the raw products who are then selling those products to Kuku Farms to be selling at the farmer's market, selling at the roadside stand, and also making into value add products. They also have SAE Designs, Right, so they listed them as a key partner. They do a lot of their uh, design labeling, a lot of their branding work. I've also listed USDA, United States Department of Agriculture. They've been successful and able to get some grants and other kinds of funding from USDA. Same thing with Hawaii Department of Agriculture and then Ag Tourism Association. And then down below, they list some of their cost structure. Very basic. So they list their revenue streams, so food, stale, food sales, food uh, sales, Produce, value add, ready to eat items, um, tours that they're doing at the Roadside Cafe, and also being able to bring in some money from grants. And then the cost structure is the cost of goods sold for the food items. So the cost of goods sold for the food items would be, you know, uh, identifying if you're selling a farmer pizza and identifying where all the costs all for all those ingredients. So you identify that it's two dollars. Two dollars is the cost of goods sold, and then you're able to sell it for anywhere from four to six to even eight dollars. Uh, rent, so they're paying rent for where the roadside cafe is. Uh, they also have to pay for staff and insurance and uh, yeah. So this gives you a good idea of a business model canvas for Kuku Farms. Also have a couple of other examples of uh, business model canvas for some local ag businesses. So we have Big Island Bees located at Captain Cook on the island of the Big Island. Uh, yeah, where they are uh, processing honey. So as I mentioned, I'm not going to go over the details, but you can check this out as an example. And we also have Ali'i Kula Lavender, uh, located in upcountry Maui, uh, where you can check out what they're doing as well from their business model canvas. All right, so that wraps it up for this course. Uh, for the readings and assignments, check out the course website. I'll have a bunch of different links, some videos for you to check out more information on Business Model Canvas. And then also have an assignment for you to create your own 
business model canvas okay thank you so much see you next week aloha